What is up guys, this is RMD Tech, and today we're going to be looking at this graphics card. Now you might have seen on my Instagram and Twitter, I asked you guys what graphics card you thought this is. And chances are, you probably didn't see that, because only one person replied to, to those tweets and posts. It's actually kind of tragic, so I think you guys should probably go and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The links will be in, down in the description for that. I do post a lot of, sort of behind the scenes things, so you might be interested if you do enjoy my videos. Now anyway, back to the graphics card. This here is a Radeon X300. It was released in, I believe, either September or November of 2004. And this is incredibly old. This specific one came out of a Dell machine. So it's an OEM graphics card. It's nothing like it. It's not like it's from PowerColor or XFX or anything like that. This is a Dell specific GPU. And I picked this up on eBay. Uh, for, I think it cost me about 10 pounds overall. And today we're going to be looking at what the first ever PCI Express graphics card was like. This right here is the Radeon X300. The first GPU, at least that I'm aware of, that uses the PCI Express standard. It was made using the RAGE 9 architecture and has a total of 107 million transistors. As we all know, here in 2019, AMD has just released their first 7 nanometer GPU, the Radeon 7. But back in 2004, the X300 was made on a 110 nanometer process. Released in September of 2004, it came with features that at the time seemed fairly modern, boasting DirectX 9 support as well as support for the now outdated Pixel Shader 2.0. This means that 90% of games made in the last decade simply cannot run on this card. The majority of X300 graphics cards produced use DVI or VGA. However, ours uses something called Dual Monitor Solution 59 pins, or DMS59 for short. This allows you to output to two monitors via a single output port. However, at the time had very little support and has even less support now. With 64 megabytes of onboard DDR1 memory and a GPU clock of just 375 megahertz, you certainly won't be playing the latest 2019 releases on this. However, back in 2004, this was a fairly reasonable graphics card and could certainly hold its own. But that's enough of a backstory about this graphics card. How about we go grab a PC and see how this performs? And I'll actually be using the £2 gaming PC that we purchased a little while back and I actually benchmarked and we'll be putting this graphics card in there. If you haven't already seen that video, do be sure to check it out. The link will be in the video description and in the little eye around, I can't remember which side it is, but it's in the eye and you can press it and watch that video. So without further ado, how about we go and have a look and see how this graphics card actually performs in games. So obviously before we could begin benchmarking, we had to find ourselves some drivers and that actually turned out easier than I was expecting. Now obviously I can't be downloading it directly from AMD's website because they're not really supporting it for Windows 10 anymore. And honestly, I wasn't expecting them to be supporting it for Windows 7 either. However, I was actually able to find a driver for Windows 7 32-bit on an old forum post. So I managed to download that. I was a little bit worried about it. However, it did work and it installed with more or less no problems. So I was actually able to start benchmarking games fairly quickly. Now, we did actually have to, obviously, since we're using shader version 2.0, have to use some fairly old games. And I actually ended up benchmarking more or less the same games I was benchmarking on the £2 gaming PC. However, I did throw in a couple of extra ones in there as well, and it actually didn't do too badly. And so I started my benchmarking with Grand Theft Auto 3, as I had done previously, which actually ran fairly well. We were actually able to run at 1280 by 800 and achieve a comfortable 31 FPS average, seeing highs of 76 FPS. However, the occasional drop to 13 FPS in demanding scenes made it not too playable. We moved on from this to Half-Life, where we saw actually very playable frame rates, achieving a minimum of 35 with an average of 55 FPS and a maximum of 63 FPS. Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, as some of you may well already know, is one of my favourite childhood games, and this GPU was able to run it no problems, achieving a minimum FPS of 23, averaging 34, and a maximum of 55, all at 1280 by 800. Now begins some of our newer titles. With a recent popularity gain of Minecraft, I thought we'd give that a go. However, some of the newer versions of Minecraft refused to even open, and so I had to run something a little older. 
Minecraft version 1.2.5 ran surprisingly well, even though Fraps didn't seem to enjoy recording it. We actually achieved a 24 FPS minimum, an average FPS of 41, and a maximum FPS of 68. This was with smooth lighting off and a render distance set to low. Next up were some games that this GPU actually felt reasonably smooth in. It's time for some arcade style classics. I dug Peggle and Plants vs Zombies out of the depths of my Origin library, and I was pleasantly surprised by how they ran. In Peggle, we saw an average FPS of 47, only dropping as low as 37, and achieving a maximum of 51. But for this style of game, this was more than acceptable. Plants vs Zombies also ran fairly well, although did feel a little stuttery, dropping to minimums of 10 FPS and only achieving a maximum FPS of 50 giving us an average FPS of 35. I was hoping to try some newer titles too, however their incompatibility with Shader 2.0 made this impossible. As you can see, trying to play Software Inc was definitely not a fun time. I also wanted to see what this GPU was like for just watching videos online, and so I went on obviously the best YouTube channel, RMD Tech, and tried to see if I could run my own videos. And the answer was technically yes, although they didn't feel particularly smooth, they were very sort of choppy and slow. However, they did technically run, and so yeah, if you really want to, you can watch my videos on this graphics card, though I really wouldn't recommend it. So I was actually planning on doing the benchmarking for this graphics card over a couple of days, and I started yesterday, and once I was done for the day, I decided to turn off the computer and go to bed. However, after waking up this morning, I tried to turn the computer on, and it felt incredibly slow. And in actual fact, it, it was, in fact, the PC's clock was so slow, the 30 second timer to count down into Windows to boot normally actually took more than 20 minutes. And this was watching it slowly tick down from 30 seconds down to 29 seconds took a matter of minutes. And so there was definitely something wrong with the two pound gaming PC. And I don't know whether this was caused by me installing the graphics card or whether it was caused by something completely different. However, I haven't had time to benchmark it, uh, not benchmark it, I haven't had time to diagnose it. And so unfortunately I have had to stop the benchmarking where we are at the moment. And in fact, to be able to get the footage I'd already recorded off, I had to take out the hard drive and plug it into my external hard drive dock to be able to get any of the footage off of it. And so I'm a little bit disappointed in that. However, I think we did get a good range of different benchmarks to see how this graphics card can perform. So if you did want to see a follow-up to this video where I do literally anything else of it, if you do have any ideas, please do leave that in the comment section down below. However, outside of that, I think we're probably done with this graphics card. It performs incredibly well. And for the first PCIe graphics card, it is 15 years old at this point. I think it, it actually held its own fairly well and I'm actually, I'm, I'm quite impressed. Is it worth the £10 I paid for it? Definitely not. Would I recommend you buy one? Definitely not. You can get much better deals on graphics cards for £10. You, literally anything else pretty much. It's, it's not worth your money. It is not worth your money in the slightest. However, I think that does wrap up this video with a solid non-recommendation on the Radeon X300. And so if you did find that video useful, I don't know how you would find it useful, but if you did, then please do hit like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.